Number 40, find the currents flowing in the circuit in figure 21.47. All right, so um, for a review, definitely check out numbers 35 through 39. All right, if you if you kind of watch all those and then watch this one, I think you're gonna be really good uh, with you know identifying currents. Here, I'm gonna to try to go just a little faster. So uh, when we're analyzing a complex, a complex circuit like this, there's almost like three, cir it almost looks like three circuits in one. There's one circuit here, there's another circuit here, and then there's a big circuit. Okay. In order to do this, then we're probably going to need three equations. And the way it usually works out is we're going to need a um, two, um, oh my goodness, two loop. <laughs> Forgot the name for a second. We're going to need uh, two loops, loop equations. And then we'll probably need uh, one junction equation. Now, don't, you know, don't get, uh, I, I can't even read that. That says junction. So um, don't get too, you know, caught up in, ooh, which loop do I choose? You said three, we only need two. It doesn't matter. Choose two. All right. Um, what I'm going to do, and don't worry about the currents. I mean, they already outlined it for you, so just follow that out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to extend the arrows a little bit. Okay, that's I3, just so we can follow along. Um, this one is I2, that it's going to move into in a clockwise direction. Okay, that's going to be uh, I2. Uh, and then I1 here is moving in a... Uh, also in a uh, clockwise direction. So I'm just going to start it there, go up, and uh, I should have connected it. So there we go. All right, so that is going to be now the I1. Okay, so choose two loops. It really doesn't matter, uh, you know, it, it doesn't matter. So why don't, um, why don't I choose uh, this? So let's say pick a point and then come back to that point. So let's start with F. And why don't we go, uh, since since we'll move in the direction of the current, that doesn't matter, by the way, I'm going to choose to analyze this loop all right, in a uh, clockwise direction. You could have definitely chosen to do it the opposite way. All the numbers at the end would have worked out. So don't waste too much time thinking about which way to go. Just kind of like a lot in life, just make up your mind and do it. All right? So let's take a look then at uh, this particular loop. Remember the loop rule is talking about then the uh, the sum of all the potential rises minus the sum of all the potential, the V, the potential falls or drops is going to equal zero. What I do is I put my negative sign in here. I'm not going to plug in negatives for these guys. I'm going to let this negative sign take care of it. Okay, at the end, we're going to distribute. So I'm going to have two parentheses. All right, I don't have to worry about the signs now. I just plug it all in. I do have to, though, worry about the category. All right, uh, so... Here we go. So if I'm starting at F and I'm going to go traveling up, oh, I cross a battery here. So the battery, if you notice, it's going from a shorter line to a bigger line. The bigger line is positive, the shorter line is negative. You're going from a negative state to a positive state. Ah, aren't you happy? Your potential's rising. So that's going to be 18 volts, and we're going to plug that into the rises category. So 18 volts. Now uh, we pass through then, next thing is we pass through this resistor. Since we're traveling in the direction of the stated current, this represents a potential fall. Now remember, I can describe the potential fall across that using Ohm's law, V is equal to IR. All I need to know is the current flowing through that resistor and the resistance of that resistor. So we don't know the current, we're just going to, but we're calling it I1, so that's fine. And then we're going to use the uh, resistance of 0.5. So I'm going to write that in the falls category, okay? So 0 0.5 times an I1. Next, I get to this resistance. Same thing. It goes in the fall category. It's going to be 20 times I1. See how fast we can now move? Keep going. We're going to pass through B. Up. Oh, we hit another resistor, but we're traveling with the direction of the current there. Note that it's not I1 anymore. It's I2. So what we're going to do is it's going to be then, um, sorry, it's going to be 8. All right. So plus 8 times then uh, I2. Cool. All right. Let's keep moving this on over. And uh, then we're going to keep traveling. Oh, we come to a battery, right? Anytime you're going from negative to then positive because we're traveling down, you're getting happy, right? Oh, we're starting negative, becoming positive. So this is a potential rise, right? You're raising your potential. So add that on over here. If it was the opposite, if this was the long bar and that was the short bar, obviously you would put the 12 in this category. Easy enough. So um, next up, oh, we're going in the still direction of the current, still a direction of I2. We pass through this resistor. That's going to represent a potential fall. So here, just add it on in. So it's going to be 0.5 times an I2. All right, keep going. Oh my goodness, another resistor, jeez. All right, so another potential fall. So add that on in, 0 0.75 I2. 
All right, great. Oh, cool. Another battery. Wonderful. Uh, but this time it's going from a long bar to a short bar. So we're going from positive to negative. Oh, we're not as happy, right? We're reducing our potential. So just like I had mentioned before, plug this 24 into the category over here. Since I don't really have much, well, I do have a little room. So let's move this on over a little bit. Let's extend. Oop. What happened to the zero? So let's extend this a little bit. <clears throat> so then I'm going to plug it on in plus 24. Okay. You might have learned. Oh, they, he told me the, the teacher told me to use negative. That's fine. But don't you then use this formula. I'm taking the negative kind of all out of these guys. So I don't have to worry about the signs yet. Then I'm going to distribute the negative, you know, at the end. And they'll all become uh, negative. All right. Then we're still traveling around the loop. And finally, almost to get to letter F, we still got to travel through this resistance. Don't worry about the junctions. There's nothing going on there. So you're just going to keep traveling through. Up, oh, you hit that resistance. So that's going to represent uh, 15 times then I1 now because that's the I1 current. All right. So this was 24 plus then. Let's move this a little bit. And that's going to be 15 uh, I1. 15 I1. All right, clean this up a little bit, just combine some like terms. So here we can add those two together, right? I mean, that's simply 30. Then it's going to be minus. So let's combine some things in here. So we got I1 here, I1 here, I, that's it, uh, I1 over here as well. So it's 15, right? So we got 20 and 15 is going to be 35. Add a half, so 35 and a half. So 35.5 I1 plus. Do the next, group the next. So it looks like maybe I2s. So we got that I2, we got that I2, we got that I2. So it's going to be, whoops, 8 plus 3 quarters is 8 and 3 quarters, plus a half, so that's going to be 9 and a quarter. And so 9.25. All right, and that's going to be I2. Let me just double check that because I hate to get to the end of the problem and realize I made a silly mistake. So 8 plus 0.5 plus 0.75. Okay, 9.25, good. And then this 24 is kind of just hanging out, so just plug it down, plug it in. And now what I'm going to do is now I'm going to distribute that negative sign to each. Okay, negative this, negative that, and then negative the 24. So then now it's just going to become 30 minus 35.5 I1 minus 9.25 I2 minus then 24 is all equal to zero. Okay, this whole thing was equal to zero. I combine those like terms now and I realize I get a value of six, right? Minus then 35.5 I1 minus 9.25 I2 is equal to zero. That's one of the loops, leave it alone. We're gonna put it on the side, okay? So let's put it, uh, yeah, let's put it down here. All right, now it's a race. Let's do another loop. Isn't this exciting, right? Hopefully you're doing enough practice here though. Oh, oh boy. All right, one more time. And hopefully, like I was just gonna mention, hopefully you're doing enough practice where it's not hard. It's just a long process, but it, it's not that bad, right? Just like anything in life. Nothing is totally easy. Nothing worth having is easy either. So, you know, put in a little work. Now, um, <clears throat> choose whichever loop you want. Okay, it doesn't matter um, which which loop we're going to choose next. I'll choose, I don't know, start at this same point and uh, maybe I'm going to go this way. Around this one. Just make sure it's different. Okay, then the loop you just selected. So notice I went around in a clockwise fashion, so let's do it, okay? So we went around in a clockwise fashion. So here we're gonna have, we're gonna come to a battery, small line to big line, negative to positive, we're happy, it's gonna be a potential rise. So that's 18, so you're gonna plug it into this category, okay? So 18, you can put your parentheses down. All right, then we're gonna get to this resistor, we're traveling in the direction of the stated current, I1, so therefore it's a potential fall, so that's gonna be 0.5 times I1. Then next one, same thing, that's going to be 20 times I1. Then we're coming down now. Okay, now notice it's no longer I1. It's going to be I3 in this vicinity. So now we got to write I3 times the 6. It's a little hidden there, but that should be 6, I think. And <clears throat> times 6, I now 3. Okay. Then we come to another battery. And again, we're going from a smaller one to a bigger one because we're traveling on down. So we're going big to little. Oh, we're happy. So that's a potential rise of 3 volts. So add it on into the rise category. And then going down up, we've got to get through a resistance. We're traveling in the direction of the current, so therefore it's going to be 0.25 times I3. Add that to the falls category. So this is going to be 0.25 times I3. Finally, make your last loop on back to the original point of F, and we've got to pass through this resistor, so that's a fall. We're traveling in the direction of I1, so it's going to be 15 I1. And there we go. All right, so plus 15 I1. Now just combine some like terms. This looks like 21 to me. Hopefully I don't have to check that in the calculator. 
but you never know at this hour. Uh, minus then, let's combine some like terms in there. So this is I1, this is I1, and this one's also I1, right? So we have 20 plus 15 is going to be 35, plus 0.5 is 35.5. Okay, that sounds similar to last time, so I probably didn't mess that up, so that's good. So I1. And then uh, the only other two terms in here, I hope, is going to be this and this. Let me just make sure there was no potential. Yeah, okay. So it was just these two I3, so that's 6 plus 0.25, so that's 6.25. So plus then 6.25 I3. And that's all equal to zero, all right? So combine all the like terms, there we go. Now distribute the negative if you want. So 21 minus then 35.5 I1, minus then 6.25 I3 is all equal to zero. All right, now keep these on the side. So here are our two uh, loop rules. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to now use the junction rule, but look, all the junction rule is, just get rid of the Vs in here and get rid of rise. Instead, just plug in current and plug in in for inflow, okay? Get rid of the V, get rid of false, and now just do current and out for outflow. In other words, what we can now do, let me just erase this little highlight. What we can now do is we can simply take any particular junction we like, all right? There's really only two though in the problem, it's either B or E. Because there's a certain amount of current flowing in, and then there's some current flowing out. That's what a junction is. All right, same thing over here. There's some current flowing into the junction, and then there's some current flowing out. Does not matter which one you choose, just pick one, all right? Let's choose uh, letter B. So what current is flowing in? It looks like just I1, right, as it's labeled. So that is just I1, minus now the sum of all the currents flowing out. So it looks like I2 and I3. So just put it in parentheses, I2 plus I3 is then equal to zero. And now if you wanted, you can simply just, right, uh, distribute the negative. So that's I1 minus I2 minus I3 is all equal to zero. And there's now the three equations. All right, now, let's erase all this, okay? And let's see what we got going. So now what the trick is, is the trick is to kind of consider what you solve for here, consider what you got over here, and start substituting. Now, notice that um, these two equations have a common term. They have a common term of I1. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna solve this equation not for I1, but I'm gonna solve for I3. I'm gonna take this equation and I'm gonna not solve it for I1, but I'm gonna solve it for I2. Watch what's gonna happen. So basically what I'm saying is if you have these two loop rules and you have a variable in common, solve those equations for the other variable then, okay? So I'm gonna take this first one and we're going to then begin solving for the, and let me get rid of that highlight. <clears throat> let's solve that for I3, okay? And let's see if I can get rid of the little box. All right, um, so if I gotta solve that for I3, I gotta bring this stuff on over to the, actually, you know what, let's just bring this on over. All right, so there's gonna be 21 minus 35.5 I1 is equal to then 6.25 I3. Divide both sides by 6.25. So we get I3 now being equal to 21 minus 35.5 I1 all over 6.25. All right, keep that on the side, okay? So we're gonna leave it there. Let's now do the next one, okay? So I'm gonna take this formula, bring it on out, and we're gonna solve that now for I2, okay? Let's get rid of the little box. All right. Solve for I2, do the same thing. Just move it on over to the right. So we get six minus 35.5 I1 is equal to 9.25 I2. Divide both sides by 9.25 and we're gonna realize that I2 will now be equal to six minus 35.5 I1 all over then 9.25. All right, so why did we do this? Well, just take a step back. Take a look at now your junction rule. And this is basically what's gonna happen. You take your two loop rules, you're gonna solve for this, you're gonna solve for the opposite, you know, the variables that these two equations do not have in common. And the reason for that is because now what you can do is you can take this thing, which is solved for I2, and you can plug it in for I2 in this equation. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this thing and plug it in for I3 in that equation. And lo and behold, you have now one equation with only one single unknown. In other words, 
you have an I1 in this term, then you're going to have an I1 in that term, and an I1 in that term, and now it's just simply uh, an, an algebra problem, right? So let's do that, okay? So you're going to take I1, leave it alone, minus then I2, so you got to plug in this whole thing, right? So make sure, careful with your parentheses, 6 minus 35.5 I1, all over then 9.25, and then that's going to be subtracted from now, careful again, put in your parentheses I3. So it's 21 minus 35.5 I1 all over then 6.25. Okay, now let's get rid of all this. Hopefully, let me just make sure I copied it all right. Six minus seven, okay, cool. 21, 35, I1. Okay, everything looks fine. <clears throat> all right, so now let's do some algebra. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this denominator and distribute it to each of the numerators, uh, and I'm going to do the division. So I'm going to take now 6 divided by 9.25. And that comes out. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to round the values on the page, but when I do the calculations later on, I'm going to use exact values, okay, 0.649. And then minus now the 35.5 divided by 9.25. And that works out to be about 3.84, 3.84 I1. Close them. Minus then. Do this one now. Divide the 6.25 into 21. So 21 divided by 6.25. And that works out to be about 3, not about, but exactly 3.36. And then take the 6.25 divided into the 33.5. Uh, so, uh, sorry, 35. Oh, almost made a mistake on that. 35.5. All right, divide that by then 6.25. <clears throat> so that's 5.68 exactly. So it's minus then. 5.68 I1. Now, distribute the negative uh, values, okay? So I'm gonna distribute this one, and then I'm gonna distribute this one. Very good. So that's now I1 minus 0 0.649 plus 3.84 I1 minus 3.68, uh, 66, six. no, 3.36, 3 3.36. Oh my goodness. Well, yeah, well, you know, 1.45 a.m., what do you expect? So uh, plus then 5.68 I1. Um, hopefully that's good. Zero is equal to zero. So now we're going to combine some like terms. So we've got an I1 here, an I1 here, and an I1 here. So let's just add them all up. I'm going to use the exact value. So we've got one I1 plus then that 3.84. So I'm going to use that exact value. Uh, plus then the 5.68. Okay, so now I get about 10.5, 10.5 I1. And now I got a negative here and a negative here, right? So I'm going to subtract them from one another. They're both negative. So negative now, let's plug in that value. Uh, 0.649, I think that was an exact. Yes, yeah, so I'm going back, getting that exact value. And then it's going to be now uh, subtracted from the positive, 3.84, right? No, 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 3.36, which was, that was an exact value. All right, let me just make sure my answer makes sense. So about four, right? So minus 4.01, and they're both negative. Yeah, that's about right. Okay, equals zero. Bring the 4.01 over onto the right-hand side. So we've got 10.5 I1 is equal to then 4.01, Divide out the 10.5 from both sides, and we realize that we're going to get that value divided by 10. Oh, let me do the exact value, though. I get a value of about I1 is going to be negative 0 0.381. Okay, so now that's the value of I1. Then all we're going to do is we got to... Oh, missed something. All we're going to do then is we're going to simply now go back. Okay, erase this. And by the way, the negative sign just implies that the current that was predicted for I1 in the problem is incorrect. In other words, the current's not going to flow in a clockwise fashion. It's instead going to flow in a counterclockwise fashion there. But no big deal. It doesn't mean that anything's wrong. Just note that, okay? So now what you're going to do is you're going to take your I1 value. You can plug it into either one of these. It doesn't matter, all right? So remember that this represented I2 and this represented I3 came right from the formula over here in the work that we did prior. So we know that I2 will be equal to 6 minus 
35.5 times our I1 value, which is now negative 0.381, all then divided by 9.25. And here we go. So let's see what we get. So we're going to get 6 minus now 35.5 times that negative value. <clears throat> and then divide it now by 9.25. And this comes out to be about 2.11. 2.11. All right, and that's in amps, right? All these are in amps. Okay. Now, I3 you can solve in a couple of different ways, obviously. Um, easiest way to do it, I think, is to just use now the formula up there. That uh, this one, I1 minus I2 minus I3 is equal to zero. So that means that I3 will simply be equal to I1 minus I2. So just plug it in. I1 we said was negative 0.381 minus then the I2, which is now 2.11. And let's see what we get. I3 then will be equal to, let's see. So 2 point, okay, that'll be negative. And then minus now the three point. So let me add that because it's already negative. All right, so it looks like we're getting a value of about negative 2.49 or so amps. All that that means is that the current is flowing in the opposite direction of what's predicted. So no big deal. Let's just take a look now at what the real currents should look like. So we just erase this all. So according to this, my I1 was negative, and therefore the predicted current of this going around in a clockwise fashion is incorrect. It should be going this way. But that doesn't matter in terms of, you know, in, in, in terms of finding the numbers for the currents, who cares if it's negative or positive? Remember, there's no such thing as a negative current. Like, either there's current flowing in the wire, or there isn't current flowing in the wire, right? The negative sign just tells you the direction. In this case, it's going to tell you if you were right with your prediction. So in reality, this is really I1, okay? Then I2, as predicted, was correct. So therefore, that I2 is going around in a, um, in a clockwise uh, fashion, okay? So that's I2. Now, notice, if you left I3 alone, or if I3 came out to be positive, something's wrong, because that means I3 would have been going down. And wait a minute, you have now three things coming into a junction, do you have anything going out of the junction? No, that's impossible. It can't happen. So I pretty much know, unless there was an error in the numbers, I know that at least I'm generally in the ballpark. Okay? In other words, I think everything should be good. So this is I3. Okay, it's pointing in the opposite direction of what was predicted. So let's just double check up here. Remember, our current for now B, it's technically I1 is flowing out. I3 is flowing in. And then... Um, I2 is still pointing to the right. So that still makes sense. There's something flowing in, something flowing out. Guys, thank you so very much for tuning in. I really do hope this helped. Please remember to help us out if you can and subscribe. It truly means a lot. And I look forward to helping you with more problems. Take care.